think we're all good to go on this end. So let's get started in the interest of time since I know we're a few minutes past 11 o'clock. I want to say good morning to everyone. My name is Dr. Jessica Syed and I am the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions here at Rowan. Thank you all so much for joining us this morning. I know for some of you, you may just be waking up and rolling out of bed and logging onto our virtual session, our students included as well. I don't know if any of our ambassadors are just waking up and joining us, but I do want to thank everyone for logging on today. If you are in the South Jersey area or even all of New Jersey, I think today's supposed to be beautiful outside. I heard it's already warm out. Um, so thank you for sitting inside on your computer and maybe you guys are outside joining us, which would be pretty nice. So um, I want to give a special shout out to all of our incoming and accepted students for the fall class of 2024, our incoming freshmen and then any incoming transfer students as well. So congratulations and welcome. And we can't wait to meet you on campus. So it's great to get to see you virtually today, but we're really, really excited to get to meet you on campus. Um, for those of you who have not yet participated in a session, and I do recognize a few familiar names on our attendee list, so welcome back. Um, I wanna point you all to the Q&A feature on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. So for students, you guys, we can't see or hear you. Hopefully you can both see and hear us, um, but for you to communicate with us throughout the session, um, you will be writing in any questions that you guys have through that Q&A feature on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. So we don't have a formal presentation for today. We really want you to use this time to get to know our current students at Rowan and really ask any and all questions that you guys have. Nothing is off limits. This is a fantastic group of students that we have. Um, so you guys, again, please take this time to ask any and all questions that you do have. So to get us started, and for those of you who have been in some other virtual sessions with me, I always try to get to know who is in the room. And for students, you may feel like you're the only one on here, um, but we do have over 10 students in the session right now. So you guys are not alone. There are definitely other students here as well. So if everyone wants to take a moment in that Q&A box, if you can let us know who you are. So I already saw Anthony, good morning, introduce himself. How are you? Um, he's an incoming freshman athletic trainer, but if everyone in the session today could introduce themselves. So let us know where you're coming from, where you go to high school, if you're an accepted student coming in for the fall semester or a prospective student still just looking at colleges right now, maybe you're a freshman, sophomore, or junior in high school, whether you're an incoming freshman or a transfer student, we've met some international students on some of our sessions. So let us know who you are. Um, and while you are introducing yourself, give us something fun that you plan on doing today. It's a Friday, it's supposed to be 85 degrees in South Jersey today. So let us know something fun. You guys know if you talk to me in other sessions, I'm always trying to get a good Netflix show recommendation or a recipe, but give me some good outside activities today that we could take advantage of so we can see who we have. Hey, Allie, Bruce again from Kingsway, go Dragons. You are an incoming freshman for RTF, radio, television, film. You might go swimming in your pool. That's awesome, I wish I could come over. That sounds great. I'm impressed that your pool's already up and running. That's great, perfect weather for it. I think tomorrow's supposed to be nice too, so maybe you can get a, a two for this weekend. Good stuff. We have Joshua, hey Josh, good to see you again. You've been in a bunch of our sessions as well. I recognize that name from Raritan Valley. Incoming accepted student, you also might go swimming. I feel left out. I have no plans to go swimming today. I think I need to make some new friends with the pool. That sounds nice. Uh, we have Isaiah who is committed. Excellent. We can't wait to see you this fall. Um, Isaiah, let's see. Oh, everyone's texting it or writing in now. Um, coming in for athletic training. That's fantastic. Hi, Mike from Clearview. Undecided, totally fine. Many of our students come in undecided. Um, probably spend most of the day playing basketball. That sounds fun. I'm glad you guys are taking advantage of some of this nice weather. Um, we have Esperanza, who's an incoming psych transfer student from TNEC. Excellent. Doing, preparing some things for your mom's birthday. Nice. My neighbor yesterday had a birthday party, a virtual birthday party outside a drive-by. It was during one of the sessions and there was honking and lots of people banging pots and pans. And I was trying to stay on mute as much as possible, but it was really exciting. She had a, a good turnout. Um, hi, Ashley from Mount Olive. Good to see you. Um, coming into Rowan undecided and you're going for a walk later today. That sounds excellent. Perfect day for that. And we have Isaiah going for a bike ride. All right, good stuff. So I'm glad you guys are getting outside, enjoying the nice weather. Um, looks like we do have a lot of incoming students, so we can virtually meet each other as well. Um, but at this point, I will stop talking because I know you guys are here to talk to our current students. So I'm going to turn it over to our panel. So I'm going to first have you guys do some introductions. And then our student attendees, again, please type in any and all questions that you have. I would love to turn the session over to you. Um, but right now, I'll turn it over to our students to do some introductions. So, Pri, do you want to start us off this morning? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, good morning, everyone. Um, like JP mentioned, uh, my name is Pri. I am a senior. Well, actually, I just graduated, so it feels a little weird saying that. Um, but I am a recent graduate, so I guess a proud alum of Rowan University. Um, I majored in biological sciences with a minor in women and gender studies. 
Um, I'm from Hamilton, New Jersey, so I also commuted all four years. Um, so if anyone has any questions about commuting or because I know that I saw a few of you are pretty close. Um, so if you have any questions about that, feel free to ask me. And um, I guess a fun fact about myself is um, I am actually a coordinator of the program. So I haven't given tours in a really long time, um, but I'm super excited to get to talk to every one of you. All right, I'm picking on Sean Scott. You're up next. Awesome. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you guys for coming today. Uh, my name is Sean Scott. Uh, just like Pre, I just graduated last week. Um, so I was a senior, now I'm an alumni. Um, I'm from Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Um, when I was at Rowan, I studied finance. Um, so my major was finance. Um, and uh, a fun fact about me was I was actually the mascot uh, for Rowan for two years. Um, and then I was involved in a couple different programs at Rowan. Um, I worked for our campus rec department. Um, I worked for admissions, which is like this event right now. Um, and then I also did some work with Student Alumni Association. Um, so if any of you guys have any questions about like what any of those um, like organizations or clubs are, um, feel free to ask me about that kind of stuff. All right, Megan. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Megan. I am a math major currently at Rowan with a physics and astronomy minor. Oh, I forgot I'm now a senior. That's really weird to me. Um, I can technically now my junior year done with that, but uh, yeah, so I'm entering my senior year. Um, I'm actually from Akko, New Jersey, a really small town, actually right near Pre, ha right near Hamilton. I went to Hamilton High School and um, I lived on campus all four years, so a little difference there. We both are from about the same area, so a lot of people from my area also commute um, as well as live there. You can choose to do either. I think both are great options. So a uh, little fun fact about me, um, other than being involved with admissions ambassadors on campus, which is one of my favorite things about Rowan, um, I still am actually a competitive Irish dancer, so I do that on the side. and. Um, I do have a lot of competitions with that and a lot of practices during the uh, school year with that. So that's always a lot of fun. I also stay involved on campus through honors and uh, go on a lot of fun trips with that. So, yeah. All right, last but not least, Carolyn. I think, I think you're muted. Are we good now? Can you hear me? Okay, good. Um, Good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a great week. My name is Caroline. I'm also a rising senior. I'm a mechanical engineering major with a concentration in honors. Um, I'm involved with admissions, as all my lovely friends here are. And uh, in addition to that, I'm also the president of one of our student organizations on campus, Women in Engineering. So since we've um, gone online for schooling and everything, um, I've started to do some live streams on our Instagram. So that was pretty cool. I got to talk to some empowering women over the past few weeks. So that was a lot of fun. Awesome, thanks guys. So it looks like we already have some questions coming in from our students. So I'm very excited about this group today of attendees because I see a lot of familiar faces. I think maybe, although we haven't met in person yet, um, maybe we have some future ambassador tour guides amongst us right now in this group because you guys have asked fantastic questions in all of these sessions. So it's great to see you back and asking more questions today. So Allie wants to know, what is the best way that you have found to stay included on campus and be involved while being a commuter? This is such a great question. And I think, um, so let's start with our commuter students and I'm also gonna switch it to residential students, especially in your first year, that tra transition for anybody between high school and college can be really hard. Um, so let's start with commuters and then we can also take it over to residential. Um, okay, so when I actually um, started off at Rowan, I was very much, so I had an off-campus job. I was a pharmacy technician at Rite Aid, so I would layer my classes together at 8 a.m. every single day, um, get in and out. I'd be out by like 11, maybe like 12, 15 at the latest. Um, I'd go home, take a nap, go to work. Like that was like basically um, kind of my routine. I came to Rowan with a few of my high school friends too, um, and they also commuted, so I never really kind of um, integrated myself into the Rowan environment until I realized that I was actually missing out and that is um, something that I'm glad that I realized um, so a great way to get involved as a commuter even though you might be 
super used to um, just kind of being acclimated in your own home, very similar to how high school was, um, I would say get involved with a whole bunch of clubs in your um, major. Like I'm sure that all of our other ambassadors here can talk about it too, but every single department has a um, a whole bunch of clubs for you to get involved in. Um, personally, for me, there wasn't anything that um, there wasn't anything specific to what I was looking for. So I created my own club. So it's now the um, chapter. It's our own university chapter of the American Medical Women's Association. Um, but there's an organization for everyone out there. Um, that would be my biggest thing. We also have something called the Rowan Announcer, which is amazing. Um, every morning, it's like your Rowan newsletter. It tells you all about things that are going on around campus, fun events that are happening. Um, and it's just, it's really nice. I actually found out about this position through the Rowan Announcer. Um, so definitely keep out a lookout um, for that and also make friends you know it's everyone has the same experience freshman year um, no one really knows anyone in your classes and things like that so everyone's looking for a friend and that's how you kind of get your own group together um, and I would say commuter it's definitely it's really easy like integrating yourself in the environment um, it just kind of happens anyone else want to hop in I can take it as someone that lives on campus. Um, so I know I, I haven't commuted at all, but I do have a lot of friends that have commuted. Actually, one of my uh, best friends from my hometown. She's actually one of now the coordinators of Ambassadors, Julia. Um, she's from the same town as me in her freshman year. She decided to commute. Um, I know that she enjoyed it a lot. She actually met a lot of people on campus and ended up living with them her sophomore year. Um, so I went a little bit of a different route. I chose to live on there. There's, but I did meet a lot of commuters. I knew a lot of people that did commute, uh, commute that were in my classes. Um, so you kind of just involve them and um, keep everybody together, invite them to events. As a commuter, you just stay involved by going to all the events they're offered for you as well as for students off campus as well. So or on campus, sorry, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they're offered for everybody. So I really uh, encourage you to go to all the events. Raw offers, Raw's uh, Rowan After Hours, they offer some amazing events on the weekends um, and just stay involved by going to all the things, uh, going or go, uh, getting involved in organizations um, and stuff like that. And I think you'll find your way really nice. Anyone else? You guys can just hop. If not, we'll move. I'll on. hop in next. I'm actually, I forgot to mention this earlier, but I'm from Mullica Hill. So whoever said they go to Clearview, that's where I would have gone if I went to public school. So what's up, Mullica Hill and or Mantua? Um, so I'm super close to Rowan. I'm like 12 minutes away, um, but I still decided to live on campus anyway. And I really think for me personally, that enhanced my experience at Rowan. Um, I lived in Holly Point in in engineering learning community. So I was taking classes with a lot of the people that I was living in a pod with. And it was really cool to be able to just kind of like knock on people's doors at 1 a.m. and be like, hey, I need help with my Calc homework. Is anybody up? And like most of the time somebody's up because we're college students and someone's awake at every hour of the day. So um, that was just a really great way for me to find my community. And then I also started meeting a lot of upperclassmen really quickly by going to uh, club events and club meetings and stuff like that. Um, I went to a lot of engineering specific clubs and just kind of met people that way. And then they would reach out to me and be like, hey, you seem really involved and you seem like you have some good leadership qualities. So do you want to like run for an e-board position? And then I said yes, because freshman year, I just kind of said yes to every opportunity that came my way. And that's kind of how I met a lot of people. That's how I made a lot of friends. And then eventually that's how I found my way to being an admissions ambassador. And it's definitely one of the most rewarding experiences of college for me. Um, so I do real quick. Um, so for me, uh, what was really helpful get like, um, what was helpful to get me involved in college was at the beginning of every semester, uh, Rowan actually has this really big organization fair. Um, and it's very like well marketed. Like you'll know like when it is like they put flyers up, they'll send you emails and stuff. So you like, it's hard to miss it. And, um, and it's really cool. Pretty much like almost all of the organization on campus um, are all, it's like a one-stop shop. So you can see all, um, each organization will set up a table um, and you can go up and talk to a couple people from that organization to see what it's about. And almost all of the tables will have like a sign-up sheet. Um, and like my advice would be to sign up for stuff, even if you're not sure, 
Um, Cause you can always sign up, go to an interest meeting and then like see whether it's right for you or not. Um, so that's a really cool thing that helped me a lot because that was, I was able to see what the school had to offer and see like what opportunities were there for me. Um, and I feel like if I hadn't gone to those type of like organiza organization fairs, like I wouldn't have even known like half the stuff Rowan has to offer. Um, so I think like part of it too, is just make sure that you're always like, keeping an open mind um, and like looking for um, like new opportunities, like new involvements that can come your way. Awesome, thanks guys. So we've had a couple more questions coming in while we were talking about that. So um, thanks to our attendees for already being so interactive, I'm excited. So Joshua is another one of our virtual event MVPs. I recognize your name, I've seen you at a lot of our sessions. And Joshua has a four part question. So I'll go through it and then Priya, I'm gonna tag you first to jump in. Um, what was majoring in biological sciences like throughout your college career? What are some popular classes that students like to take? And who are the best freshmen and sophomore professor professors based on your experience? So a very loaded question, but I love to see it. Um, so we always on tour, um, we pride ourselves in the fact that Rowan um, has a very small um, class size. So we have an average class size of 21 students. The average um, student to professor ratio is 17 to one. Um, I came from a fairly small high school, so this was actually perfect for me. Um, you know, I integrated myself into the college environment um, very easily. Um, however, I would say that um, it is one of the biggest perks of being a bio major because I'm not sure about what your learning style is or what other students learning styles are but for me I do um, as soon as I have a question I feel like I need to raise my hand and I need to have a professor answer it because you know some of the material is very hard um, and it's difficult too. like and of course college is very fast paced so um, I would raise my hand my professor would call on me answer my question um, it was different than when I was touring other larger schools you know they have a different um, system of how students can go about asking questions and how professors answer them. Um, so I definitely got that one on one attention that I needed and it was super helpful in my lab classes. Um, so for um, most of your biological science core classes, you're going their labs. Um, so you have lecture and also a lab and in lab um, your professor works with you most of the time it was a me with a group of three other people. Um, if you have a question, your professor comes over, helps you out. Um, it was super helpful for those hard uh, lab classes like organic chemistry, molecular genetics, things like that. Um, imagine taking a class like that in a huge lecture hall or um, in a lab with a lot of people. And it's just really nice and comforting because um, like I said, it's very similar to high school in the fact that you get that undivided attention of your professor. Um, for example, my I just recently took um, God, I just graduated last week and I forgot what class I took. Um, I took microbiology. Um, it's one of the prerequisites that I need for a dental school. Um, and I took that class and her professor, um, she gave us her phone number and she was like, if you ever have a question about anything, um, feel free to email me, but give me a call, give me a text at any time of day. And as a high school student, I would have never thought that a professor would have given me their phone number, you know? So whenever I had a question about like lipids or something like that, I would give her a quick text and then she would answer me right away. And I just thought that, that was absolutely amazing. Um, so I guess that answers the first part that for a major like biological sciences, I feel like um, there is no perfect school. There's no greater perfect school than Rowan. I feel like um, obviously I'm biased, but I just feel like it, you know, the small class size has definitely helped me with that. Um, what are some popular classes that students like to take? So um, once you start off as a bio major, you're going to have to take core classes. So these are your bio one through four. So that's like genetics, evolution, um, cell biology, um, ecology. Those are your bio one through four. And then you have like chem one, chem two, uh, orgo, or organic chemistry, I apologize, organic chemistry one, two, physics one, and physics two. So those are the core classes that you absolutely have to take. Um, so there isn't a lot of variation in that, um, but you can knock those out your first two years. And then your last two years, um, so your junior and senior year, you can actually choose any upper level class that you like, which I think is the most amazing part of the bio curriculum at Rowan. Um, so we have so many exciting courses. I'm actually really sad that college is in five years, as weird as it sounds, because I feel like I could have stuck in a lot of extra classes that would have helped me um, for my future. If you're interested in medicine or research or what have you, um, 
But again, we have some super amazing courses like microbiology, immunology, um, you know, even herpetology. And it's just like you would you would have never thought that we have such a wide variety of courses. Um, so as far as popular classes that students like to take and as far as professors go, um, I really enjoyed um, taking advanced cell biology. It was nice because cell biology is one of the core classes that you need to take. So advanced cell biology was just, um, you know, kind of like the same foundation, but just expanding on the material. Um, and if you want I like jot some names down. I took Dr. Eaton. He is one of the best professors that we have. Um, and for ecology, I took um, I took honors ecology with Dr. Richmond. And she, um, you know, I like she is probably my favorite professor at Rowan. Um, I give her an email, a text anytime I need her for absolutely anything. Um, recently, I've been very stressed out about my taking my DAT exams. So that's a dental admissions test, um, especially with everything that's going on with COVID-19. And, um, you know, I send her an email. I'm just like, I'm just really stressed out and then, like I don't know if I'm gonna get this done and like she's you know right there to calm me down and like who would have thought that my ecology professor would be the one like walking me through my dental school process you know it's like you just never know um the personal connections that you make um but just to close off my spiel I will give you a website it is called ratemyprofessors.com and I'm sure all of our ambassadors can fill in on that I have used that um severely for every single one of my classes before I picked my classes. Um, so it's this website and not just for Rowan, if you choose to go to any other college, it's completely fine. Um, but right, my professor, you go to the school, you search up the, the professor's name and it gives you a bunch of reviews, um, the grade that they got, like what their teaching style was, if they were a difficult professor or not, um, if they enjoyed, would they take that professor again, stuff like that. So um, if you're ever worried about not knowing who to take, you can definitely ask an upperclassman, um, but this website will be your absolute holy grail um, when picking classes out. Um, so I would definitely recommend that. It's called ratemyprofessor.com. Um, and yeah, so that would be, that'll help you find the greatest professors and um yeah thanks great that was a great answer um so i'm going to give you one more follow-up from joshua i thought he asked four questions so here's the fourth one that just came in so um you are part of our pre-dental concentration so that falls within our health professions program so joshua wanted to know about your experience through that program and for any student watching i know we are focusing specifically on biological sciences right now um but you know i'll expand this to everybody else on our panel but we are offering academic sessions throughout the rest of the month so if you're not hearing you know information about your specific program join us for either a college or a major session you would just go right back on that virtual resources website and you can register for all of those individual sessions and for Joshua specifically and anybody else that would be interested, our health professions virtual session is on May 27th at 11 a.m. So there you'll get to meet Dr. Hendrick who oversees our health professions concentration that I'll pass the mic to Pri to talk more about, uh, but that's another great opportunity just to learn some more about that program. So Pri, if you wanna just share a bit about your experiences within that concentration. Sure. So the first thing that I would um, recommend to an incoming freshman who wants to get involved in medicine later on is um, take advantage of the pre-health organizations that we have. Um, we have a bunch of them. Um, I can't even name them, but they are a very um, they are a very close knit community. Um, I would say that. Um, connection was off. Okay. Um, I would say that um, there is an organization for any field of medicine that you're looking into. You know, we have a pre-dental association. We have um, an organization called Minority Asso Association for Pre-Medical Students. We have a pre-health club. Um, and, you know, if you're into um, empowering women in medicine, and now we have the um, AMWA chapter of Rowan. Um, again, we have a whole bunch of organizations. These organizations will not only help you um, meet new people who are also looking into go into the same field that you are um, to kind of give you that moral support but also it'll help you get volunteer opportunities shadowing opportunities um internships and things like that you know um at med schools dental schools they have a very um they have a certain number of requirements for lack of better words and you need a certain amount of and clinical experience and stuff like that, I would recommend getting started as early as freshman year. I feel like there's nothing wrong with, um, there's nothing wrong with having a lot of experience. Um, so I would say definitely get involved with those pre-health organizations. They will give you the best um, opportunities 
for being a pre-med student. And also like JP mentioned, um, Dr. Hendrick, she is the one that oversees the program. Um, she is going to be your advisor for the program. And there are a, there's quite a bit of pre-med students here at Rhodes campus and she oversees the pre-med and pre-dental um, programs. So I would say, you know, you want to, you want to get to know her, you want to email her, introduce yourself to her. Um, she has so many, um, so many individuals to kind of keep track of. So it's really just nice for her to see a familiar face. So I would say it does, there's no harm in like coming in freshman year and introducing yourself and um, emailing her and just say, hey, I'm interested in pre-med. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself and I hope that we can meet sometime soon. And she will actually guide you through the entire process all four years. Um, I know that I have been emailing her back and forth. Um, despite already having graduated, I am applying this upcoming cycle to dental school. Um, I email her, she responds within a day about any single question that I have. Um, it's easy to make an appointment with her too. So I would definitely say take advantage of your advisors and get involved as early as possible. Um, get your shadowing hours, your volunteer experience, your, um, you know, get maybe getting a job as like an EMT on campus. Um, I would say that there's a whole bunch of opportunities here for you to succeed as a pre-health student. Um, you just have to know where to find them. And it's a good thing that I just told you where to find them. Um, so definitely get involved in your clubs and organizations and um, even your professors. You know, we do research at Rowan too um, in all of our departments. And that's great. Um, you know, med schools, dental schools, they love to see that. Um, personally, I didn't do any research, but you know, I have shadowing experience, um, leadership experience, um, things like that. So I feel like coming in, um, you won't be blindsided you know, you will have a path, you will have people that will guide you through everything, um, but that would be my bit of advice. Great, thanks Pri. So I'm going to switch gears for a minute and we had a really good question from Anthony who asked about club basketball. So I'm gonna pass this one to Sean Scott to start us off. But Sean, if you wanna talk about some of our club sports teams and then really focus on intramurals and then again, open it up to anybody who wants to chime in. I think we have so many great opportunities for students in terms of recreation. So Sean, if you want to kick that off, that would be great. Awesome. Uh, so, um, kind of to start off, I just want to explain. So at Rowan, we have um, three levels of sports, which is actually really cool. Um, so we have first um, intramural sports. So intramural sports would be Rowan students playing other Rowan students. Um, we have, I believe it's like over 30 intramural sports. So like anything you can think of is pretty much there. Um, and it's really cool. We have men's leagues, women's leagues, co-ed leagues. Um, so really whatever you're looking for, um, they have like, um, they have like just for fun leagues and then they have more competitive leagues. So whether you just want to play with kids from your hall or whether you want to like play on a more competitive level, like there's all those kind of leagues for you at the rec center. Um, then we have our second level of sports, which is club sports. Um, so I know that the question was about club basketball. Um, so our club basketball team would fall under this category. Um, with club sports, it's a little bit of a higher competitive level. Um, it would be Rowan students playing students from other universities, um, but they're more uh, localized. So you would be playing probably schools like Monmouth, TCNJ, Ryder, um, probably schools in New Jersey or Pennsylvania. Um, and it would be um, more of a structured schedule, but it's not like you're practicing every day. So it's not like taking up all of your time, but it'll be a little bit more of a time commitment than in intramurals would be. Um, with club sports, most of them do have tryouts. Um, so I know for club basketball, they do have a tryout um, process that you have to go through. Um, and then the third level of sports we have is um, our division three NCAA recognized sports. Um, Correct me if I, I'm wrong, I believe we have eight men's teams and 10 women's teams at the moment um, for that. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, I know the question was specifically about basketball. So for basketball, we do have all three levels. Um, we have intramural basketball, club basketball, and our NCAA level basketball. Um, but we do have a wide variety of sports in all three of those categories. Um, and really whatever you're looking for um, to get out of that, whether it be a competitiveness or to play just for fun or make friends, um, you can really find that on whichever level you would like to play. Great, thanks, Sean. Um, does anyone else want to chime in on anything they've participated in? Or can anyone talk about Battleship, which is hands down my favorite intramural sport that we offer here at Rowan? If not, I will gladly talk about it. 
I guess I'm talking about it. So Battleship, <laughs> maybe no one else thinks is as cool as I do, but I love it. And if any of our student attendees have met me before, you know, I'm always talking about Battleship because I think it's really unique. It's something fun that we do. Um, so Battleship, if you guys remember the board game that you played when you were kids, we do a, I always say, real life Battleship. So essentially you get three or four canoes and four people on a team get in a canoe and all of those canoes get in our rec center pool at the same time. And everyone gets a bucket, one person gets a kickboard to use as a shield and you are essentially scooping water from the pool with your bucket, dumping it into somebody else's canoe to sink their battleship. So the last canoe standing is the winner. So I believe it's an intramural sport. I know we also do a big battleship tournament for our homecoming week. I think last year there were like 200 teams or some ridiculous number and they did this crazy bracket style tournament. Um, it is a lot of fun. We have done it with our student ambassadors um, as well for like a, a team building activity. I participated in Battleship many years ago as a professional employee and I was on the Dean of Students team and everyone wanted to sink the Dean of Students. So we were drowned in you know 30 seconds, but it was so much fun. Um, I don't think that's something anyone probably has done in high school. So being open to new opportunities and experiences like that at Rowan or wherever you guys do end up going to college is really cool. So if you come to Rowan, at least check out Battleship. You can go and watch if you don't want to participate, but it is a ton of fun. So I think we do a really nice job of offering just some different and unique opportunities and experiences for students. I'm disappointed that none of you guys want to talk about Battleship because I just think it's so fun. Anyway. <laughs> All we right, wanted so to give you the floor, JP. You love Battleship so much. Say it again. <laughs> I said we wanted to give you the floor, JP. You love Battleship. I do. Can you see my passion for Battleship? <laughs> it is a lot of fun. Um, all right, so we had a question. I'll, I'll take it back to a not so fun question. Uh, we had a student, and I'm happy to cover this one, who asked about the cost of living. So let me give a quick overview on um, expenses, what that looks like, and I'm going to also touch on the college financing plan since I know we do have a lot of incoming students. So um, at Rowan University, um, the great news is our tuition right now is frozen for the upcoming year. So our tuition is a flat rate of $14,000 for the year. Fees would be on top of that. I think there are a couple hundred dollars. And then if you were to live on campus, obviously your room and board. Um, so if you are an in-state student within the state of New Jersey, we are a public institution. So your total cost would be about $27,000. For an out-of-state student living outside of the state of New Jersey, you're looking at closer to 32,000. So we did, again, our president just let us know probably two weeks ago that we froze tuition for this upcoming year. And many students don't realize that each year your tuition does increase. Um, our current president has promised while he's at Rowan and they did just renew his contract. So I think you guys are all safe during your time here um, that he would not increase the rate of tuition over the cost of inflation uh, or the rate of inflation rather, which is about 2%. So you're looking at a couple hundred dollars a year. Um, this is a really important question to be thinking about and asking schools because you do see some schools increasing tuition each year, eight to 10%. That's where you're looking at a lot of money where that becomes thousands of dollars every year. So again, rest assured, you will be at $14,000 for this upcoming year for tuition. Um, now, I, I want everyone to be mindful that those are what we call a direct cost. So when a student receives their bill, if they're living on campus, again, you would also receive your, your housing bill, um, but that is a direct cost that you would pay to the institution. As an incoming student, if you filed your FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid, that's a need-based financial aid, you will receive what we call a college financing plan. And this is essentially um, your financial aid package. So this would outline any scholarships, grants, or loans that you qualify for. And that college financing plan gives you what's called a cost of attendance. So this goes back to the initial question. And your cost of attendance in that college financing plan includes those direct costs that I just covered, but it also includes indirect costs. So what do we mean by indirect costs? So indirect costs include things like books, educational supplies, transportation costs, if you're a commuter, it's factoring in the price of gas and your car insurance. So all those other fringe costs that you will be paying um, on top of your tuition and fees. So that cost of attendance usually looks a lot higher than that advertised direct cost. Um, so just being mindful of that as you are looking at that college financing plan. So again, this will vary for every student depending on your financial situation or the scholarships that you received coming in. If you do have questions, probably the best thing to do is reach out to admissions at rowan.edu and we can sit down virtually or on the phone one-on-one -on -one with a uh, admissions counselor and you and even if your parents wanted to hop on the call and we can go over that college financing plan line by line and let you know exactly what you could expect to be paying and at the end of the day for an incoming student you really want to be focusing on what are you paying out of pocket right how much is this actually going to cost for me to come to rowan so that's something that we would happily do so again 
reach out to admissions at rowan.edu. Your actual bill, which reflects if you're living on campus, if you're a commuter, where you're living on campus, we do have some residence halls that are more expensive than others, and even your meal plan can change the cost. So the cost of attendance that you would see on your college financing plan is an average. So it's an average of what it could be across all of the different options. Obviously, an unlimited meal plan with as much food as you want, really, whenever you want, is going to cost more than if you were limited to 14 meals a week. So that price will vary on your actual bill. But the college financing plan gives you a really nice estimated cost of attendance. So again, admissions at round.edu. If you guys do want to talk more one-on-one, -on -one, I think it's a fantastic thing to do just so you, again, have a sense of how much all of this costs. That's a really huge, a huge question for a lot of students and their families. All right, so hopefully that answered. Um, all right, so we have a question from Nick, who is another virtual event MVP. Nick, good to see you back on the session today. Um, but can you guys talk about any research experience that you've had? Um, and let's also include internships in that. So any research opportunities, internships, um, and then we'll go from there, whoever wants to hop in. I'll start off. Um, so I heard a rumor for lack of better words um that you know if you wanted to get into a really good dental school or a medical school um you should have research under your belt um and during the i want to say yeah so the spring semester of my freshman year um i reached out to one of my professors in the chemistry department um and i it was as easy as setting up an appointment with him and emailing him letting him know that i was interested in the research that he did and the cool thing about rowan's website is um, at least in the college of science and math um you can look online and see what research each of your professors are doing so you know it's easy as searching up their names and just seeing what projects they're working on um so i knew that it was something that I was really interested in so I emailed him about it and I said um you know like I would be uh, like you know if you have any room in your research lab like I would be willing to learn I just you know want to just get some experience I I didn't exactly know where I was going to go with research I knew that it wasn't something that I really wanted to do um but I just wanted to like know what it was like and you know college is all about maximizing your experience so I was like why not um so I did it and the first day I realized how much I did not like it and there's something that I want to highlight from this experience and it's the fact about how easy it was for me to express my enthusiasm to my professor and he saw that I was a student who actually just really just wanted to get some experience and you know that's one great thing about Rowan that your professors are always looking to help you I know that at other schools it's really hard to get some research experience um so you know as easy as me emailing him me meeting with him and him saying you know what yeah like you can start off um and I realized I did not like it and you know that is completely okay um you don't have to be someone that um you know like has to do research to get involved in like um um go to like medical school or dental school or anything what have you um but i would say for those that are interested in research it's really just as easy as showing that you're passionate about something you know i would recommend um if you are looking to get into research um you know look online see what you know research projects professors are working on um and you look into that when you go to meet them or when you email them just you know maybe read up on some of that you know it's just as easy as googling something and just showing them that you really just um want to learn more and they are just just so welcoming to help you and things like that and I just want to highlight the fact that I did this as a freshman um if I had fallen in love with research I would have been doing it all four years like I just I can't even like I know um one of my best friends who is also a coordinator she has been doing research in a um, microbiology lab for about three and a half years you know she started off um fall semester um, her sophomore year, you know, so she's been doing it all three years, you know, she's gone to research conferences um, in California and you know, just like a whole bunch of places and it was really just as easy as her having a professor for a class and her reaching out to him saying like, you know, I'm really interested in research. Um, can I like join your research lab and you know, they just see that commitment for you um, and they're like here to help you succeed, you know, a professor really isn't gaining that much from um, allowing you into their research lab, you know, but I feel like they can always just use an extra pair of hands, but I I feel like the main goal is just for them to help you out, um, especially seeing that you are just someone that's really committed and compassionate and determined. Um, and I feel like that's the best quality. So if that is something that you are looking into, I would say definitely start early because it's possible um, and reach out to your professors, reach out to people in the department, email people. Um, it's the best way to get involved. And again, it just wasn't something for me. I just don't like working with tiny things, I guess. I probably shouldn't be saying that as a future dentist, um, but I just, I feel like it just wasn't for me and that's completely fine. 
upfront because I know that that's not something that I want to go into. And I feel like a big thing is the college is all about trial and error. Um, and you could be like Kim and you could just fall in love with research. So. Um, so I can chime in next, um, kind of off the back half of what Jay was saying, uh, more on the internship side. Um, so uh, one thing that really helped me um, at Rowan, and I think it could help like a lot of students is um, every semester Rowan has a university wide career fair. Um, and along with that, uh, they also have uh, more major related or major focused career fairs as well. So it's really cool because each uh, semester you get an opportunity to see kind of a big career fair with a lot of different opportunities. And then you can also look out for uh, smaller career fairs with more focused opportunities. Um, but along with that, um, I had an internship last summer with TD Bank in their corporate office. It was a really um, beneficial experience. I learned a lot, um, but it was really cool because it was an opportunity I wouldn't have known about if I didn't go to the career fairs. Um, so it's really cool, like even if you don't know what you wanna do or you don't know if you're looking for an internship, it doesn't hurt to just go to these type of networking or uh, these career events and just kind of see what's out there because you re never really know what's out there until you actually go and look. And it was really cool because it was just, it opened my eyes to like um, just different uh, career opportunities after college and it was a very rewarding experience. Very cool too because Rowan has been doing a really good job the past couple of years um, creating relationships with outside companies and organizations. Um, so they really do have a lot of connections in the world, with, um, like big recognizable companies. So. It's really cool because there are opportunities through Rowan to work with different places outside of um, outside of college, and um, like it's really cool. So I got the TD Bank internship, and then um, actually next month I'm going to start working for Lockheed Martin, which is an engineering firm. Um, so I'll be working in their finance department. But both my internship and my full time position, I I fully got through the career fair um, because I met Lockheed Martin at the career fair. So. Um, I, I always love pushing that, like when talking to new students, cause like those career fairs put me where I am today. So those are very helpful. Um, if you ever feel like you want to go to those, even if you're a little bit nervous, my advice is just go, um, just be yourself and talk to people and you'll figure it out along the way. We have a question from Cassie and Caroline. I'm going to throw this to you. Um, can you talk a bit about the engineering program at Rowan, if the courses are different, and I guess your experiences as an engineer? I was secretly hoping that we had an engineer in the audience because I could talk about this forever. Um, I won't, but I could for a while. Um, so Rowan's engineering curriculum is very hands-on. Um, you're going to be in the machine shop in our projects lab from your freshman year. Um, freshmen take a course called mechanical design. So you'll be designing and building your own robotic claw in a team. And the robotic claw picks up a 3D printed object and like moves it from one target to the next. And then ideally you can get your whole class, like everyone's claw in the class to like get in a circle and you can pick up and pass the same object all in a circle, which is really cool. Um, so that was definitely a fun project to do freshman year. It was definitely challenging, but it teaches you a lot in terms of um, design for manufacture and design for efficiency and things like that. And that'll only really get emphasized as you move along in your engineering courses. Um, so depending on the discipline that you choose your freshman year, um, I'm mechanical, so I take classes like mechanical design, machine design, statics, dynamics, strength of materials, material science, um, thermal fluid sciences. So just a ton of classes like that. If you're into chemical engineering, you'll take um, like chemical process engineering, um, a bunch of different stuff like that. Obviously you'll take your um, general courses your freshman year. So uh, most of the engineering curriculum is the same the first two semesters and then you'll get more major specific the further along you go. So uh, your first semester as a freshman, you'll take chemistry or physics. Um, you'll definitely take all of the calcs. So depending on what calc you've taken in high school, you can test out of calc one, you can go right to calc two. Some people go right to calc three and then they'll just be ahead of the game and they can take extra classes, pick up a minor. Um, so yeah, that's kind of basically what our curriculum is like. And we also have um, 
engineering clinics, which are even more hands on. And your freshman and sophomore year, you'll learn the basics of engineering. So you'll get to learn about different kinds of design and um, public speaking and technical writing and all that good stuff. Because we want our engineers to be able to communicate their ideas as well as create them, because that's just as important. And then your junior and senior year, you'll get to pick what projects you want to work on. And it's kind of like research, kind of not, because you're doing a hands on project. And a lot of the time, you can work with companies that are outside of Rowan and they're kind of like, Commissioning, but like that's definitely not the right word for it. Um, they get Rowan students to work on these projects for them because um, they're giving them extra funding and they're working with the university and everything like that. So it's a great partnership, just like uh, Sean was just talking about. We have lots of uh, partnerships with companies like Lockheed Martin and NASA and things like that. Um, so, yeah. Great, thank you. So I want to be mindful of the time since we are almost at 10 to 12 time. Time flies, guys, and these are a lot of great questions coming in. So um, we have two questions that we haven't answered yet. Anthony, I'm gonna save yours for our final question. It was a perfect segue. Um, so I'll start with Joshua's question. And Joshua, as we dive into this question, um, Joshua asked about online and remote learning, how that adjustment has been for our students if we have transitioned to online learning for the remainder of our semester. Um, we do have another standalone current student panel that is just focusing on the adjustment to online learning. So that is May 18th at 11 a.m. Um, so the focus of that will be how our students have transitioned, what they've liked about it, what they haven't liked about it. So join us for that as well. But if you guys um, wanna just touch on what your experience was like this semester to answer Joshua's question, and then we'll end on Anthony. I can take it. <laughs> um, so for me, online learning, um, I do, I would say I prefer being in person for my classes. That's just my preference. But online learning has been um, a little bit of an adjustment. I do really like the way the teachers have adjusted to online learning. Um, for me, all of my teachers went through our Blackboard, um, which is kind of Rowan's eboard I uh, that you guys all have some kind of e-board at your high school. Um, but on the Blackboard, there we have this thing called Collaborate, and that was our way of staying in with our classes. Um, it was a really cool tool to use, and um, they used all kinds of different, uh, they had like, uh, my one professor, he used polls and uh, different, you would like pick A, B, C, D to like have uh, classes uh, work with each other more and have more, actual learning and remote um, conversations and everything. Um, someone just have your turn, turn your mics on so that you would be talking with um, other students and you can put them into other groups. So there were just a lot of cool different things that they could do with it. Um, they could record the sessions too, so that if you did miss something, you can go back and watch the session later. Um, that I found very, very helpful. Um, and not all the professors had um, remote learning that you had to stay in class at that time. I had a few professors that just gave you work and said, here are some assignments. These are going to be due by these times. And you would do it like that. And that's kind of on your own basis. You would have to have time management that way. Um, but then a lot of my professors also had it where you showed up at the exact time that you would have if you were in class, um, which that is also a good way to keep you in the school mindset kind of thing. So I know you're home and uh, it was a little hard adjusting to being home and like having to wake up, but go to school in your own bedroom kind of thing. I know that was a little difficult to adjust to, but um, over time it did become a little easier to do. Um, so I, I don't know what, what the future will hold, but I think adjusting to online learning was really, um, it was really smooth transition and I think all the teachers adjusted really nicely and with time they'll just be able to improve on those um, technologies. So yeah. All right, thanks Megan. Um, all right, so let's finish up with Anthony's question and if everyone can chime in on this, that would be great. So Anthony wants to know if anyone remembers back to their freshman year, and I know we have a couple of recent seniors here so going back a few years, but if you guys can talk about that adjustment, um, that transition from high school to college, as we've mentioned before, can be really challenging. So can you share a bit about your experience and how you made it a little bit easier um, and what you remember from that adjustment back to your freshman year?
Um, I can go. So I remember being totally overwhelmed my freshman year, like not necessarily in a bad way. It's just completely different from everything that you're used to. You're If you're living on campus, you're not living at home anymore. Um, you're with a lot of people that you don't know and you're taking classes and having to figure out your own schedule by yourself and trying to figure out how you work best as an individual instead of as part of like a family unit. So it's definitely, it absolutely is a challenge and it's okay to feel overwhelmed and it's okay to feel like lost and confused, but that's what your peers are there for. That's what your friends are there for. That's what all the adult mentors around you are there for. So I highly recommend just like finding your support system, finding a support system. It doesn't have to be the one that you stick with throughout college. It can just be like your freshman roommate or like maybe you really vibe with one of your professors and you want to go to them for advice. Um, most of the time they're totally willing to just like have a meeting with you and sit down and talk about all the things that are like completely stressing you out. Um, and then if all else fails, call mom and dad. Like they love you, they miss you, they want to hear from you. Um, and it's it's definitely an adjustment, so you have to be patient with yourself and give yourself time. Um, but yeah, that's what I would suggest is just um, finding things that make you feel more comfortable and more at home because college is definitely a big step outside of your comfort zone. But that's the whole point is to step outside that comfort zone and get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Also, I saw that Cassie had some engineering specific questions. So JP, is there a way that I can give her my email? So um, she can ask those questions to me because I'm trying to type it in the Q&A part and it won't let me send. Hmm. I'll send it to you, Cassie. Thank you. Thanks, Ellie. Okay, so just kind of bouncing off of what um, Caroline said, I feel like the most amazing thing about college is that it is a new beginning. So I'm sure that I can speak for myself and obviously um, maybe for Caroline, Megan, and Sean too. Um, I am a completely different person now than who I was in high school and I love that about myself. I um, College has definitely changed me for the better um, and I think going into college you should think of it not as like a new chapter but more so as a new beginning um, because you can you can honestly just make it, your college experience is what you make it. Um, so go in with a fresh mindset, you know, you can meet new people, get involved. Um, colleges, I like after having graduated, I just don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. I just feel like I already miss everything that I was doing um, with my friends like two weeks ago, or I guess before COVID-19 happened. Um, but it's definitely like the best time that I had. Um, and I feel like it like my experiences are what made it so um like memorable for me and um i just feel like you know go in with a fresh mindset know that this is a new beginning not a lot of people know who you are um if you want to be someone that you never were before that's completely fine you know college is all about changing who you are and finding the group of people that will accept the new you um if you come in with high school friends that's also fine too at least that's giving you some sense of stability and everything but um like what we've been saying this entire time, you know, go to the organization fair, you know, look at the Rowan announcer, talk to your professors, um, go to like clubs and interest meetings and stuff like that. And like Caroline said, you know, if all else fails, um, mom and dad are always there. Um, and there's nothing wrong with also um, going home for like a weekend or, or two when you do miss them. Like I said, once you get acclimated to the Rowan environment, you're never going to want to go home. Even as a commuter, um, I would spend nights in my friend's apartments because I just like wouldn't want to go home. There's just so much going on um, on all hours of the day. You know, the student center where we go to get food and stuff like that. There's like music blasting at like one in the morning. Um, so it's just it's just such a lively environment. Um, so I just feel like, you know, but if you know, it is a hard transition, there's nothing wrong with wanting to go home, you know, checking up on your pets and things like that. Um, but I feel like once you actually um, get acclimated to the environment, I feel like you're never going to want to leave. Um, so going off what Pre said, um, like really, like, I think it's good. She brought it up. Like, it's okay to feel like you want to like go home, like up like one or two weekends, like a month, like the first semester, like the first semester was kind of like a hard transition for me. Um, like I missed my dog a lot. Like I missed my mom a lot. So I would go home a couple of times a month just to see them. But really like Pre said, like once like the second semester of freshman year hit, like 
I started like making, like having friends and having organizations I was a part of like, and you really don't like by the end of senior year, like you couldn't drag me home. Like, so like, it's really cool because like, I remember like freshman year, I was like scared, like, like intimidated and like, it's okay to feel those things because like, it's something you haven't experienced before. Like college is um, bigger than probably your high school was. And, and I think it's important to remember like everybody is, is going through this. Um, Cause I remember uh, like my freshman year, I felt like I was the only person who was like scared or nervous, like, no, like everyone around you is scared or nervous. They might just not show it or they'll show it differently. But um, I think it's really cool. Um, you guys will see like, and you you probably had like your parents or like relatives tell you this, like this is the most free time you'll ever have in your life when you're at college. And I think it's important just to like, not that you have to schedule out every minute of free time, but like just make sure you make the most of your time. Um, like make sure if you, there's so much opportunity. Like I never knew I could be a admissions ambassador. I never knew I could be the mascot. Like, and I got those things just through like looking and through like putting effort in. So college is really what you make of it. Like what you put in is what you get out. And it's really cool. Cause like whatever you like want to do here, you can do here. Like you can join clubs, you can join organizations, you can be on executive boards. So just make sure like, enjoy your free time and also look to see ways to enrich your free time. I know we're short on time and I know that they basically covered most of the things that I would wanted to say, but um, I do love to say that uh, the one thing I remember the most about my freshman year, one of my favorite stories um, is my first night um, living at Holly Point um, there were these two girls that came up to my door. They just knocked on the door and they're just they introduced themselves and they just said they were going to go to door to door and say hi to every single person they saw. So uh, we ended up, I joined them, me and my roommate, and we just ended up going with them door to door and we picked up so many people. By the end, we had a group of about 20 people walking down the hall. Um, so it was just a really fun way to um, especially experience the first night of college, but to just meet new people. Um, I'm pretty sure um, I've seen these people all around campus throughout my uh, time at Rowan. Um, not that I know their names. I met so many people my freshman year, but just meeting people in itself is um, such a gift that uh, you don't understand until you actually get to do it. Um, so I will say moving uh, to uh, Rowan, the transition was, a little challenging um like they all said the adjustment is a little difficult and it's something that you just have to get used to if you need to go home just to get that little sense of uh familiarity and then come back uh both of it's really uh just a great experience overall and um thinking back to my freshman year i it feels like it was yesterday i wish it was yesterday i can't believe i'm gonna be a senior um <laughs> But uh, it was really such a great experience. And um, if you come to Rowan, I guarantee that you will have such a great experience. <laughs> All right, awesome. Thank you so much to our student uh, panelists today who joined us. We really appreciate it. It was a great conversation and a special thank you to our, all of our student attendees. You guys asked awesome questions. This is a really fun session. Um, it is 12 o'clock already, so we will sign off at this point. Hopefully everyone can get outside and enjoy the nice weather. But congratulations again to all of our incoming students. Hopefully we will see you at some more of our virtual events throughout the rest of this month. And we're really, really excited to see you on campus even sooner. So hopefully again, we'll see you this fall. Have a wonderful weekend and enjoy the beautiful weather. Thanks everyone. Bye.